questions will be asked about whether he is the right person to deliver the change needed for the monarchy to survive. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 things you didn't know about King Charles III. It's something that dawns on you with the most ghastly, inexorable way that people are interested in one. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at things you may not know about His Majesty. Let us know in the comments whether you'll be attending a street party or avoiding them at all costs. Number 10. Instruments The King is an avid musician and has been since his youth when he picked up the cello. Not only did he play the cello extensively, he also tried his hand at other instruments, including the piano, trumpet and guitar, quite the variety. As well as his love of classical music, because of which he's commissioned many new pieces of music for the coronation, he's also a trained singer. While at Gordonston, the notorious Scottish boarding school the King attended, he joined the school choir and school orchestra, and his passion for music has never wavered. Number 9. Welsh There was a lot of controversy when Charles had his investiture as the Prince of Wales in 1969. Welsh nationalists weren't happy to see another English-born Prince of Wales named, discourse which has picked up again since Prince William inherited the title from his father. But as a gesture of good faith to Wales, Charles was sent to Aberystwyth University for a term, where he threw himself into learning the Welsh language. Well, this has been a crash course. It's been only part of a crash course amongst other studies. He gave his speech at the investiture in Welsh, and has maintained his connection with the language ever since, still speaking Welsh today, even if some Welsh people would rather the title is either abolished or returned to Welsh natives. In the short time that he's been working, he's developed a very good accent, and uh, I'm sure it's going to stand him in very good stead from now on. Number 8. University As well as temporarily attending Aberystwyth, the King attended and graduated from Cambridge, attending Trinity College and graduating in 1970. This makes him the first monarch to have a university degree, as the Queen and her late sister, Princess Margaret, belonged to the generation of aristocrats who were still educated at home by a governess. Charles also attended primary school, unusual for a royal at the time, and Gordonston, like his father, Prince Philip. At Cambridge, he studied archaeology, anthropology and history, getting a 2-2. Not an ideal result for someone who's been given some of the best education in the world. Number 7. Unicorn History buffs will know that the royal family is full of strange terms and code words. We're all familiar with Operation London Bridge, the plans in place for the Queen's passing, but in the end it was a different plan, Operation Unicorn, that was used, as she died in Scotland. Interestingly, the American Secret Service has its own code names for the royal family, useful for state visits across the pond. King Charles's name is Unicorn, or alternatively, Principal. The only other British royal to have Secret Service code names was, of course, the late Queen, whose names were Redfern and Kitty Hawk. Number 6. Painting As well as music, His Majesty has an interest in painting specifically watercolours. He's always described himself as an enthusiastic amateur with regards to his painting and doesn't aspire to a professional level. Despite that though, his stature as the current king and former heir to the throne means that when his paintings have gone on sale, some of them have commanded very high prices indeed. It's reported that he's made two million pounds total over the years from selling off his pieces and many of the paintings are displayed around the country. If you want to buy one for yourself, it's going to cost upward of six grand. Not bad for an amateur. Number 5. Diving The King has tried his hand at many activities over the years, like skiing and polo. But did you know he's also a diver? He's the only British monarch to have a scuba diving qualification, and not just scuba diving in shallow tropical regions. He's gone diving up in the Canadian Arctic, visiting British ships that sunk there hundreds of years ago. Certainly not a hobby for the faint of heart. But he's also a qualified pilot, much like his father, Prince Philip, who had a passion for flying throughout his life. The King qualified as a helicopter pilot during his short military career. Number 4. 
timber top. As it happened so long ago, many of you may not realise that part of my own education took place here in Australia. The King's time at Gordonstone is well known, but did you know he was also educated in Australia at a unique school called Timbertop? Timbertop is a campus that makes up part of Geelong Grammar in Victoria, and it might be even more outdoorsy than Gordonstone. It gave me an insight into the character of this country and the individuals who have shaped it by the force of their personalities. The King has reminisced about the time he spent there doing difficult hikes in the Australian heat, cross-country runs and learning survival skills. While I was here, I had the pommy bits bashed off me like chips of an old block. He's also talked fondly of his time there, in stark contrast to Gordonston, and the isolation of the bush gave him a bit more defence against the press. Number 3. The Old Man of Loch Nagar Back in 1980, the King wrote and published a children's book called The Old Man of Loch Nagar, about a man living in a cave near the Balmoral estate. Do all old men wear bathtubs on their heads? No, only this one. You see, he was on a quest. Despite his love for art, the king didn't illustrate it as well, leaving that to popular architect Hugh Casson. I hereby claim this haven of peace and quiet in the name of me. A charming children's story, the old man of Loch Nagar is still in circulation today and has been adapted for the small screen more than once. Ah, the hermit's life suits my rugged individuality. I am the last of a dying breed. But this doesn't make the king the first royal, or even the first monarch, to have a book published. However, parts of Queen Victoria's journals and diaries were actually published during her lifetime in the 19th century. Number 2. Teddy This has been reported on a handful of times, though Prince Harry brought more attention to it in his recent memoir. The king still takes his childhood teddy bear, named Teddy, if you can believe it, everywhere with him. He even takes great care to ensure it stays in good nick, sending it off to his childhood nanny to get it repaired every now and then. Interestingly, this anecdote was told with fondness by some biographers, but derided by Harry, who called it pitiful and said it expressed the essential loneliness of his childhood. And if you've got 350 quid to spare, you can buy a King Charles III officially licensed commemorative teddy bear. Number 1. Five Figures Brace yourself because this might be hard to stomach. By the age of 18, the king was already pulling in a five-figure salary, and not at the low end. He was getting tens of thousands a year. This income all came from the Duchy of Cornwall, with the Duke of Cornwall title automatically going to the eldest son of the sovereign. When Charles turned 18, the income of the Duchy was unlocked for him, leaving him presumably one of the richest teenagers in the world. In 2022, the Duchy earned His Majesty over £20 million, and it was recently revealed that it's believed the King has £1.8 billion in his personal fortune. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.